there's this Decepticon called Scorponox that's tracking them, and he's tracking them under the sand. It's Jaws, but it's in the desert. And we were actually looking through one of the books of all the characters, and we kind of went to, hey, there's a scorpion in the desert. And Scorponok is perfect, too, because he's also sort of different than the other Decepticons. He doesn't particularly turn into a vehicle or whatever. His form is very much about the environment. The scorpion is great for the desert, and it's sort of a good you know, uh, shout out to the fans of like Beast Wars, and some of the incarnations of Transformers are a little bit more animal-based than, than vehicle-based. In pre-production, they built all these animatics, so they know anything that has a lot of, of, of action-y stuff, or there's Transformers coming through, or you know, you're being chased by one, or whatever it is, they have these animatics built, the, the computerized sort of animation of the scene before they even shoot it. Scorponok was one of the ones that we, in the department, animated completely in 3D. You know, like, I, I wanted to have the, the, the notion of these components from the Sea Stallion helicopter, which is basically what he is birthed from. So he has these kind of Sea Stallion helicopter components to him and the turbines for his hands, and I wanted to see how these things could turn and how that he could dig in and then shoot the sand out the exhaust. And all those things we developed in the department because we thought it was just a bitchin' looking right. scorpion. There were some that didn't look that were taller than that. These are target practice? Right now we're at Holloman Air Force Base in Alamogordo, New Mexico. It's actually a very active military base because they do a lot of support work for the war effort in Iraq right now. Since it's a, a missile range, everywhere you go, there's a chance of live ordnance. You go to this fence on the scout, and it says, don't walk in, live ordnance could be possible, unexploded bombs, blah, 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 and I'm like, okay. So we step over the fence, and it was weird walking. And I kept walking, you know, but looking down, and uh, so we actually had a, a minesweeper clear when we shot there for a good five acres. You see a little bit of go, and then they, and then the two mandibles, Kenny, move over this way. Yeah. But the idea that they bust through and then hit the wire pulls them away, you know? Probably no matter what you want them on, you know, either side. And let's, you know, it'd be nice. Whatever he does, whatever he does, it should be small and build like a crescendo. We are on Holloman Missile Range. Don't pick up anything with a red tip. It looks like a bomb. I'm gonna light this town up, baby. <laughs> Ready! In Mexico, we all had a really good time. We blew up uh, hundreds and hundreds of pounds of black powder and thousands of feet of primer cord. So there's where I told you about wetting it down. The chunk, you see the chunks in there, Michael? That's good. We had primer cord, which can take down a tree or destroy a car. It's a little like rope-like explosive. I had them lay out like 200 of these strands so that they can fire it on a millisecond thing where it's like It makes it look kind of like a wave coming at you. They put the high explosives on, then they put just carpet on top of it. And then they put sand on top of the carpet. And when this was ignited in a sequential order, the carpet just lifted up and it bounced the sand high enough. And it gave Michael the exact look that he wanted. Hands up! Cut. How was that, Dave? Good. Huh? Good. Were you still in it when it was falling? Yes, sir. Oh, good. Thank you. There were a lot of bombs, a lot of explosions, a lot of strafe hits. There were people flying through the air. We had guys on ratchets. So what happens in this shop besides me squinting like crazy is Scorponox is running through the ground. Do, 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 do. Of course, I'm not the smartest ranger, so I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking around. He's right behind me. Thunk, right through the chest. And then clunk, takes me back and eats me. Apparently Decepticons eat children. 
Ta da! <laughs> the idea is we're trying to time the sand so the burst out happens with Scorponok. We're imagining where his entrance point would be in the sand. At some point, we might change our actor into a, a CG replicant of this guy to be able to manipulate him. Yeah, okay. That was cool. That was cool. Let's go to the tail, please. Michael wanted a Scorpinox tail slithering through the sand. We just made a whole track right out of plywood where it actually had a groove in it. They put the lightweight plastic down, and then you put a razor blade in front of it, and as Scorpion is going through it, it just cuts that path. Something, little piece. All right, guys, I'm going to show you an animatic of what we're doing. It's a pretty cool shot. It's a trailer shot we're doing right now. Watch this. It's the one where he jumps out. So I need you running. It's right on you, you know what I'm saying? So you've got to have that in your face. All right? Trailer shot. Trailer shot. Which camera am I running towards, Mike? You're running, you're running towards that. That umbrella, guys, that umbrella is where we're running, all right? But the actors, they had to run, and I'm like, Tyrese, don't trip, because that's a real, real explosive. If it goes off, you better run. All right, y'all. This is it, Jack, the trailer. Full throttle. I mean, this is more heroic. Action! That fear on their face was them being real. And I said, just remember to, at one point, look back and look up. <laughs> Were you still screaming? Oh, yeah, you better believe it. <laughs> I think I broke my really back. Did you get anything? That's how we do it, baby. In each of the shots that we set up, we have to have a representative size for Scorponok. We want to mark where this is, where the trench is. This is the island sphere. Gives us a lighting reference for every environment that we're in. Uh, it helps the artist back at the back at ILM to uh, uh, correctly place all the reference lights and shadows and kind of match everything and make it look like it sits back in the plate. Three, two, one, action. You can see in the plate, we had a really good elements to start with in this case. And anybody that, that works in CG knows that sand is one of those things that you just, uh, the minute you hear that, you start to think, oh, you know, the, the particle work that's involved with sand can, can really drag out. You can see in this plate right here, as uh, these primer cord elements go off, we get this nice plume of sand here. And what we've done is taken that same thing, left it in the plate, and added our own, our robot inside there and sort of buried him in, a, in depth. And then as he comes forward, we reveal more and more of him. Hey, now don't close out, I've got some awesome movie extra trivia. One of the great pioneers of special effects was Ray Harryhausen. He pushed the limits of imagination, visual effects and miniatures in ways that inspired generations after him. One of his most famous moments in film was a scene in Jason and the Argonauts, where the hero had a sword fight with seven skeleton warriors. The scene was done with stop motion and took four months to complete. Hmm. Now, do you like my shirt? You can get one for yourself in the shop section under the video.